Yo, what's going on guys? We are here with my offseason predictions. And today we will be doing the Charlotte Hornets. And as you guys know, the way we do this is we'll talk about all the predictions and everything that could go on. Who they could draft, who they could sign, what we expect from this team. And of course, I would like to hear your thoughts down below before we start today's video. What do you think the Charlotte Hornets will be doing this offseason and why? Let me hear those thoughts. Hit that like and subscribe button. We're on the way to 20,000 subscribers. Now, it's pre-lottery right now. And their draft picks before the lottery are currently the 4th pick, the 27th pick, 34th, 39th, and 42nd. They, This is all subject to change, but as of right now. The odds for the number 1 pick are 12.5%. Miles Bridges is still a restricted free agent. We've heard rumors that they're going to bring him back on either like a year plus one deal where like they pay him like kind of cheap this year and then he has a player option for next year. So that way he goes back and tests free agency again next year is what I've heard. PJ Washington's a restricted free agent. Svee Mikhailu's a free agent. Kelly Oubre is free agent and Dennis Smith Jr. are all three of those guys are unrestricted free agents with Taylor Maladon and Xavier Sneed both being restricted free agents. I would not be surprised if Teo Maladon's brought back. Same thing with Svi Mikhailu and maybe even Dennis Smith Jr. But I think Kelly Oubre will go to a contending team. I could see a good team. For some reason in my head, I see like the Milwaukee Bucks signing Kelly Oubre. I don't know why, but that just sounds like the most Milwaukee Bucks move ever. Now, this is a team that has lost back-to-back -back playing games by an average of 28 points. The Hornets have ripped off the bandage of mediocrity, though not intentionally. Their second best player, restricted free agent Miles Bridges. Obviously, we know he's arrested late June for felony domestic violence charges, which he pled no contest in November, was sentenced to three years of probation. No contest is basically the equivalent to settling in civil court, but this was a criminal case, so it basically means he pleads no contest. It's not an admission of guilt. But it's not an admission of non-wrongdoing. So take it how you want. We're not going to really speak on it because I am a reporter, journalist. We're talking basketball. I've talked about it in other videos. So if that's what you want to talk about, go check those out. LaMelo Ball played only a career low 36 games. And saw his season end early because of a broken right foot slash ankle. And the roster mixed the six most games of injury because, you know, that's insane. And that's poor per spot rack and accumulating in their worst winning percentage in franchise history since the then Bobcats went 759 in 2011 to 12. The roster. All right. The roster. Did, you know, improve with, you know, the improvement will start with the draft. They have five selections. Obviously, this will also help them get clarity on what free agents they'll keep. It's, we've heard Bridges and P.J. Washington will be back. And it's also interesting if who's going to be in charge. Because Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting that Michael Jordan, or, Michael Jordan's in talks of selling a major stake in the franchise. So a change in ownership and philosophy called altered the offseason budget. And from my understanding, Michael Jordan selling the team has not really been the headlines for over a month okay and that's what i'm thinking like it, i don't think he's doing it anymore okay well bleacher report reported yesterday no never mind all right so there's nothing there's no update on it so this was all since march so i don't expect him to sell the team this year maybe i just don't want michael jordan to do it i just like having the former a former nba player beat the majority holder but maybe he's just sick of it now let's talk about their offseason finances the Hornets have $91 million in guaranteed contracts entering the season. That's because they have free agent holds for Miles Bridges, P.J. Washington, and their two first-round picks. They are an over-the-cap team. In the event that Bridges does not return, Charlotte would open up $18 million in cap space. And the last time they had cap space, they went out and signed Gordon Hayward to a four-year $120 million deal. And since taking over in 2018, the only free agents with NBA experience that Mitch Kupchak has signed are Gordon Hayward and Dennis Smith Jr., if Bridges and Washington do return, Charlotte likely has the flexibility to remote, remain below the luxury tax and have access to the mid-level and biannual exceptions. Now, a change in ownership could dictate the future of restricted free agents Bridges and Washington. Despite not playing this season, Miles Bridges, 
as I aforementioned, is a restricted free agent with the Hornets, you know, able to tender him a $7.7 million quali a qualifying offer before June 29th. The man was suspended for 30 games. 20 of those games were credited as time served for missing the entire 22-23 season. And he'll still have to set out the start of the season for the first 10 games if he resigns. Bridges averaged 21 and a half points on 52% from shooting, 40 from three. And there's no question the kid has talent. However, he hasn't played and played no contest to family charges, which raises the question of whether a lucrative contract is deserved. Washington was the most durable player on this roster, only missing four games because of a foot injury in February. He averaged a career high 15.7 points and 32.7 minutes. Now, LaMelo Ball is eligible for a five year 204 rookie max but has played only 162 games in three seasons. The conversation is focused on the impact Ball has on the court during the regular season, while also taking into account his upside. He's completely worth that deal. He's averaged a career-high 23.3 points, 8.4 assists per game. However, the Hornets were 13-23 with Ball on the court and 14-32 and with him inact inactive. Ball has played in zero playoff games. Neither had Zion Williamson before signing his extension. And he was ineffective in Charlotte's two playing losses and has proven to be less than durable. Speaking of Williamson, Charlotte could take the same approach as New Orleans did and include a games played clause that reduces the guaranteed amounts and protects the organization. Gordon Hayward's another extension candidate that I doubt that would happen, and JT Thor. JT Thor definitely deserves an extension. I like him. Now, besides health, the bench is a priority. The Hornets reserves scored 29.4 points last season off the bench fourth fewest in the nba they also ranked last in three-point field goal percentage the Hornets will send their <clears throat> their top 14 pick protected pick in 24 if it's not conveyed then in 25 and they have four future second round picks so when i look at this team is the fix easy hell no all right the fix is not easy but if you move on from Gordon Hayward's and I think Terry Rozier's contract isn't as hard, but Gordon Hayward's is. And the team I think of is depending, it would look different if the Spurs won the lottery, but if the Spurs don't win the lottery and let's say they get the third pick, I think you convince the Spurs. If you package like a first round pick that like the 27th pick and maybe another future protected first down the road or a bunch of seconds and Gordon Hayward. And then you, you flipped him for like Doug McDermott and some other, and like Devontae Graham or something like that. I think that could, <clears throat> if you guys wanted to do that, I could see something like that. Terry Rozier, I think it's a lot easier to move. You just would have to find a team that's interested in him and a team that I could see being interested in that you actually could get a pick is if you called up like Miami and you're like, we'll send you Terry Rozier for Kyle Lowry in a first round pick. They might send you Kyle Lowry in a first round pick or maybe Kyle Lowry and Nikola Jovic and for Terry Rozier because they would really want Terry Rozier over <laughs> what they currently have. So I think that's options you could look at. I think the big thing right now is freeing cap space up.